Hi friends, I hope you're doing well during the, uh, the recent difficult times with the COVID-19 crisis pandemic. I, uh, I'm working hard to try to produce some, uh, some content for you to, uh, to help the time go by. I know many of us are stuck at home uh, here in Australia where we are, where our state is in lockdown now. So uh, I've been working on some projects that I thought uh, are interesting in that they keep our imagination stimulated and uh, I'll, I'll keep working uh, like this uh, for you. And um, just a, a note to, to, to my supporters, thank you very much, always. Uh, but I hope you don't mind that I do release more content to the public because I just feel it's the least I can do during the crisis is uh, to help give people um, something. But I'll always try to then produce more for you as well. I um, hope that's cool. And uh, thank you very much, always. So today, uh, we're going to talk about vectored uh, space weathering. It's a project I've had in mind for quite some time. I've never had an opportunity to, uh, to really bring it to fruition. Uh, now's the time. Uh, I hope you really like it. And um, let's get into it. Vectored space weathering. And uh, starting off with the, the texture size and the background idea behind it. Uh, I'd actually started thinking about it when I was uh, preparing to, to do a Thunderbolt uh, from the Gundam property uh, idea uh, project. And uh, next, as I started to make this one, the White Knight prototype from the Machining Krieger genre, uh, I realized this was actually perfect as a larger scale uh, test run. As you can see, it's in uh, 120th scale. It's always easier to start off something, say a little bit, you know, a, a bigger scale, uh, and then micro it down afterwards. So uh, I'm going to go ahead with that. Now, according to this historical document, <laughs> the, the box art from Yokoyama Sensei, uh, we can see that they fly with reckless abandon head first uh, in low lunar, um, is it orbit? If they don't do an orbit, is it still orbit? Anyway, uh, <laughs> across the surface of the moon, uh, they fly around and they do, uh, do their ops there. Uh, so the idea struck me that uh, instead of doing the usual gradient of uh, weathering uh, from the feet up that is more, more common on, on mecha projects, I thought, you know, let's keep this idea that they, they fly uh, head first and vector our, our weathering so that it's through this vector and perhaps even this vector here. Uh, I tried to keep in mind if they were shooting and sighting based on how they can hold their, their primary weapon, etc. Uh, but I thought if they're mostly speeding uh, through via using the, uh, the thrusters under their feet there, the primary vector of weathering, debris, uh, stuff that was, has been thrown up into to low uh, uh, lunar orbit again, uh, would primarily strike the mecha through this vector. So as a first step, let's lightly texture the surface of our model to give the indication of it having struck debris uh, whilst flying through low lunar orbit this direction. Tools required for this are a kind of thin liquid cement. Uh, my personal preference is for this one to use this orange smelling one. I just between us and the interwebs, I don't know if it's actually any less toxic, but it does smell just a little better. Uh, so much so that I can work with it with the windows closed all day. I'm kidding, don't do that. But I do just prefer uh, the smell of this one if I have to use it for this purpose. Uh, likewise, you could use uh, this one. Uh, I've used this many times as well. I really like it. Uh, however, I do not recommend these quick setting ones because uh, we need the cement to stay liquid for a little bit longer, so don't use that one. Next, I've got a, uh, I've got a squared file. Uh, it's old and uh, quite cheap, uh, with a reasonably blunt edge and uh, not of a high quality. I would not use my good files for this one. And lastly, the star of the show, the White Knight uh, mecha that flies through uh, space and above the uh, lunar surface head first. Uh, likewise, I would also consider this a really good technique for anything from the Thunderbolt uh, series from Gundam. Uh, if you look very closely, you can probably see that I've done one round of uh, texturing up here. Now here's the process. It's dead simple. The preamble was the long. The actual process is nice and simple. You can use this one. And I've got to tell you, it's so cool having a workshop where I can just reach out and do that instead of having to scramble through a door again. Uh, I'll go for 
might actually remove this for this step just in case because you don't want the uh, the glue running along the tape. Let's do it up here but keep it away from the, the nice scribing work we've done. It doesn't need to be very thick, we just want to soften the surface. Like this. It will start working very quickly. And with our tool, we can apply vertical impacts like that. That was a nice skid. And we can imagine all kinds of interesting action taking place that he's uh, destroyed uh, an opponent, one of the opposing forces, uh, vehicles, and then uh, due to the high speed they're flying at, he can't alter course, so has flown through the debris field. Um, so we can imagine they would have a little bit of uh, physical damage and, uh, and scoring and soot uh, leftovers from the uh, from the explosion. You'll often hear people say that space might space should be clean. That's why it's space. There's nothing in it. But uh, this is talking about space in a combat zone, which would be quite different. I'm also thinking the top sections here might require a little bit as well. And I'll keep it reasonably asymmetrical. So. Now if he's right-handed, whoops, a little bit, the brush was holding a little bit more glue than I expected, so just be really careful guys when we're doing this, um, because it's a reasonably complicated shape, if the, the thin glue drips off somewhere you can end up sealing something that you didn't want to. So uh, let's work on this side, that, that little goof, I guess, or was it a goof or was it uh, just one of those you know, random happy accidents that happens as we're working, or we'll call it that, uh, has, makes me now want to keep an eye on this side, so by default that will be the one that we work on. Do you like how I made that sound like it was real? But no, it's just working with the flow. There we go. And maybe one glance in. Cool couple of micros. Sorry about getting in the light here guys. The by the nature of the you know working vertically here, it's kind of a little bit unfortunate, isn't it? And then maybe just a couple of light ones here for people looking very carefully. Okay. So that's what those ones now the other one, this one may receive a couple of glancing blows. You could imagine. So I've done a couple here on the uh, the outermost bulge there. Uh, I think this one's relatively free, but the surface is just slightly. I left the surface a little bit uh, textured uh, during the cleanup using the, uh, the abrasives. So that will work for that. The other one I thought would probably take a little bit of a beating would be these forearm armor. So. This one's going to be a little bit more challenging. I need to have a little bit more uh, glue uh, discipline. So, ah, I can see where the glue was hiding. Because this is a pretty new bottle. The glue's actually up on the, uh, it's not on the brush, it's on the, the plastic stem just above the brush. There it goes, it just offloaded there. So just a, another heads up that that caught me unawares too. Upper surface here. I'll just do a couple. Again, we don't want this to be too obnoxious. And we imagine he's going to be holding it about this angle. So, sorry, I'm in the light. He's going to hit like that. And a couple like here. I'll do the same on the other side. And lastly, the shoulder armor. It's uh, basically perpendicular to the direction of flight. So we could imagine that they will score a little bit of extra damage too. Some glue. Vertical impacts. Please be very careful not to stab yourself. Now, 
again, I don't want this to be an overpowered thing. I just want it to be noticeable. And we'll be augmenting it with, let's do one gash. We'll be augmenting it with painted effects as well. Cool, okay, that's plenty. Okay, and last spot I was thinking we probably need a couple will be this uh, external, the hip armor there. Hip armor or the waist armor would probably get just a couple of glancing blows. Okay, thank you very much guys. I hope that was uh, entertaining for you and interesting. I hope it gives you something to think about as you're working on your new projects now. Please visit paintonplastic.com for more. Uh, and also, uh, if you're interested to see the longer version of this video and support me and my work, uh, you could visit Patreon uh, Paint on Plastic. Special thanks to Hobbyco. They supplied uh, most of the stuff that I use in my videos and uh, they're open. Uh, please, please, you know, get your stuff from there to help uh, get through this. Uh, they're being very socially responsible. They've got a limit on how many people can visit, uh, go into the store physically each time. But of course their online store is open and uh, please visit that. Uh, I've linked it for you in the description of the video. A sincere warm appreciation for the, uh, the Paint on Plastic supporters who, uh, who pay a subscription over on the Patreon platform to help empower uh, pay for, for me to be able to make these YouTube videos for you. Um, We've got uh, an epic and legendary robot level, and I want to thank the people who just joined that. That's uh, Peter, uh, Alex, and Liam. So warm appreciation. Thank you very much, guys. I don't know if you know how much that really means to me during this difficult time. I mean, I'm locked up, I'm at home, I'm in isolation. Uh, when you, you send that to me, it, it's, it's, it's a big thank you. Uh, from you to me, so a big thank you from me back to you. I really appreciate it guys, thanks. And also a shout out to the Paint on Plastic uh, supporter community. I, I really appreciate you guys during this difficult time. Uh, I know it's unsettling for all of us and you know, uh, I'll admit it's, uh, it's been a really big deal for me that you guys have stuck by me uh, during this difficult time. You know, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, more soon. I'll get back to work and share more cool stuff with you soon. Thanks a bunch guys. See ya. Bye. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Stay at home. Bye.